welcome to the show. Thank, thank you so much for making the time. I mean, I, like everyone wants a piece of Dwayne Wade down in Miami. <laughs> We're so lucky to get you. Let, let's just jump straight into what is a culmination of one of the most prolific sporting careers people have ever seen. This is your final season in the NBA. Is it, is it, is it surreal for you every game you play? <laughs> um, first of all, thank you for, thanks for having me on the show. What we no, I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, you know what? You know, I've been, I've been playing the game of basketball um, since I was five years old. I am now 36. So I've been playing for 31 years. Um, so this is what I've mastered, right? This is what I've been good and great at. Um, so it definitely, it definitely is a little nerve-wracking, you know? You're a little nervous because I don't know if I'll be great at anything else like I am basketball, right? But, you know, I just decided... Um, after a long summer, you know, of really thinking about how I wanted to see my career in, um, get an opportunity uh, last year to come back to Miami. Um, I just felt, yeah, <laughs> I felt the, um, I felt the timing um, was perfect uh, for me. I, I don't want people to think I'm retiring because I can't play no more. I just want people to understand I'm retiring because I'm ready to walk and do something different, not because I can't play the game of basketball. I, um, I came out and watched my, 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 my first Miami Heat game and you were playing and to see the love in the crowd was amazing. But what's also interesting is to see how that love follows you off the court as well. You, you, you are somebody who has had the opportunity to engage in business opportunities beyond just, just basketball. You, you're, you're, you're a mogul now. I mean, you, you're involved in clothing. You, you know, you're involved in your own shoe line. You have ties, you have socks, you have luggage, you have like Dwayne Wade seems like, it doesn't seem like you're gonna be struggling to do anything when you leave. <laughs> The NBA, what do you enjoy about being in business? Um, I, what, what I enjoy about it is, first of all, you know, just being a young kid from the inner city of Chicago, my dream was to play Chateau, okay? My dream was to play in the NBA. And once I got an opportunity to get here, then so many doors opened for me, and I was able to step through those doors and learn different things that I never really thought that I had the passion for or the knowledge for. So I've been able, all these things that I've been a part of, this same stuff I went to school for, you know, this is stuff that I either had, you know, I've learned through traveling or I learned through meeting people um, that, oh, I like that. Oh, let me think about doing that. So all these things that I'm, that I'm doing, I've picked up along the way of, of just living life and, and going places and being open to new things. So I enjoy it. You know, I enjoy being able to use my creativity to have an amazing team behind me to be able to use their create creativity and be able to hopefully give the consumers, give my supporters, give the fans um, you know, something that they love and enjoy as well. So that's all I'm trying to do. Right, and you, you, you're doing it a thousand times over. You have, you have the business, you have the basketball, and a large part of Dwayne Wade has been getting involved in the community. You know, you, you, you've mentioned a few times now, coming from Chicago, growing up in Chicago, you know, as many of us know, we've been on a journey with you as fans where we've gone through the ups and downs of Chicago in your life. You know, losing loved ones to gun violence it was a really tough time for many people, I'm sure you the most. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you look at that journey and when you, when you look at what you want to do now in both Chicago and Miami, you have a few initiatives that you're working on now. Yeah. What is your dream? What are you trying to implement in the communities to try and help people? Yeah, um, so when I, was a, when I was a little kid, you know, I just remember, you know, I always saying to myself, if, if God blessed me with an opportunity to, to, to make it, right, to, to be able to give back to others, I want to do it, and I want to do it in a big way, you know, I want to, I want to be able to bless communities in a way that's going to change their lives, if I get that opportunity, and once I got the opportunity, I wanted to live right, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to do what I said, so, you know, in Chicago first, from my mother's standpoint, I said, you know what, my, here's a church, you do your part with the church, um, I bought my mom a church early on so she can continue to save lives. You bought your mom a lives. church. I bought my mom a church. <laughs> that's, all, that, that's a whole nother story, uh, how we got to that point. But I, I ended up at my mom a church, and I said, you do your job to, you know, to save lives. You know, my mother is an amazing pastor um, in the city of Chicago. My dad, my dad is into the community. My dad it does amazing things. That's where I got it from. I watched my dad for so many years. Um, give back to the community. He had me out there as a kid. Um, even though we didn't have a lot of the things we had, we had to give, give away, give to others. If I had two pair of shoes, I only ended up having one because I gave the other pair away. So I kind of had a family that I've watched my whole life kind of make sure they give. And we didn't have a lot. We didn't have a lot at all. But um, what we had was more than what others had. And so we wanted to make sure that we can, you know, we can give to the others. So 
um, it kind of started from there. Then when I got to college, my college coach always told me, he always said, Dwayne, to much is given, much is required. To much is given, much is required. And I didn't know what he meant at the time. And then once I got older, I started understanding what that means. I've been given so much, and a lot is required of me. It's required of me not only to give from my pockets, but to lend my voice, to lend my face, to stand up on this platform and support and talk about. So all those things. That's something you haven't been afraid of doing. You know, there, there, there are a lot of athletes who've been afraid of lending their voice to causes that they believe in or people that they support. You know, uh, your good friend and basically your brother, LeBron James, is somebody that you've been on a journey with for many years yeah. where you've been speaking about issues. Yeah. Um, we've seen you at, at, at sports ceremonies. We've seen you with the Parkland, kid, for instance, Parkland yeah. kids, for instance. You spent three hours with them the first day they came back to school. Why do you think... Why do you think as, a, as an athlete... As an athlete, why do you think it's so important for you to step out from beyond the game and yeah. to engage in ideas that you, you, you believe in? Well, you know, going back to that, we was in Philadelphia when we, when we heard the news um, about what happened. And I didn't know exactly where it was at. And as, immediately, as a parent, I got scared because I have kids in school. And I knew it was what area it was in, but I didn't know which school. So immediately, I'm scared, right? I'm the hardest racing. I'm beating fast. I'm trying to call my kids. And eventually I got on the phone with my kids and I realized that they was okay. But then I knew that other parents out there was hurting the same way that I was hurting, was feeling that same anxiety. So once we got a chance to come back um, to the city, it was just like, hey, can I go to the school? Can I go up there and visit? And I don't know what I'm going to do, but I just want to be able to, to bring some sort of light. I had just got back to the city. The, the city of Miami had welcomed me back with open arms uh, when I got traded back. And I wanted to bring some light. So... I had an opportunity to go, and I didn't know what to expect. It was real quiet when I got there, but man, when the kids saw me, it just it opened them up. The light in their eyes, the smiles on their faces, that right there was one of the biggest, one of the most important moments in my life of, you know what, this, what basketball has done for me and the platform that I have, this is what it's about. And I got an opportunity to sit down in a room with, with their leaders and talk to them about, hey, what can I do? What can my team do to help support you guys' initiative, what you're trying to do? Um, and it started from, you know what, my voice. Then it went from the support financially and so forth and so on. And we continue to do things. We did exhibits here in Miami and New York and L.A. We continue to support because this is my community. This is our community, and it means a lot to us. As you can tell, the people love you <laughs> as much as you love them. Dwayne Wade, everybody. 